Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 2 of this week's update video. And we're going to start off with um, Tristan's Probulator, which, sound, which is much less disturbing than it sounds. I touched briefly on this last week where I was saying it was something he was planning and now he's done a load of building work over here as well. And so he's got, we've got an extra station over here which is called the, uh, which is called the uh, Probulator Drop and this is, this is receiving supplies of all the bits and pieces that are required to make the, um, the, the, to make the various different types of probes down here. So we've got the, the, uh, what, what are these, the, the, the probes for asteroid, what are they called? They're called asteroid belt probes. So you fly these ones out in a spaceship or however you want out to an asteroid belt, you launch the probes there. They take those thousand blank data cards you can see in the pop-up there and turn them into a thousand asteroid data cards which you can see at the bottom of the pop-up. And so it's, it's a huge number of cards go into one of these things and it's a lot of um, everything, infrastructure and building and so on to get them to launch. But once you have, once you ship it out there and it launches, you get a huge amount of data back so you don't actually need to do all that many of these. Um, they're just an enormous drain on the, uh, on, on the uh, number of cards you get through. So the idea is that you build up one of these, you put it in a you put it in a probe rocket which are being made here, and you put those into a probe rocket launcher uh, or silo. They'll be fired out. You'll get the data back, and then you can ship all of those data cards back in your presumably spaceship back to Norbit, where you're doing all of your sciences, and then you feed them into your um, into your astro science area, which is uh, conveniently right next to it over here, and then they go into making the Astro Four catalog. So they go in just as another one of these sort of data cards, but for Astro Four, and you can then start doing more science with them. Similarly, we've also got the um, the energy equivalent, which is solar probes. So these these are exactly the same, um, apart from the ingredients, but it's the same sort of general idea. You, you, you put blank data cards into them, a thousand of them, and then instead of launching them from in an asteroid belt, you launch them from in solar orbit, so around Kalidus. Um, and that will then get you a thousand sun star probe data, which you can bring back in your spaceship and put into energy science tier four. So that's the reason Tristan's been doing this. He's been doing it because he needs the energy science four. But while he's do working on that, he might as well do the um, do the one for Astro as well because it's very very similar. You'll notice the recipes here. We've got okay. We've got holmium solenoids, rocket control units, flat solar panel two, rocket fuel, uh, heat shielding. Over here, it's it's it, instead of being instead of being the tier three holmium product, it's the tier three beryllium product. But other than that, it's the same rocket control modules. Okay, it's it's the basic flat solar panels rather than the advanced ones. But then also rocket fuel, also uranium fuel cells, which will need to be brought up here. But essentially, they're very, very similar recipes, and so there's a lot of overlap between them, which is why he's decided, well, might as well just do both of them. Especially as up here, you need both the Holmium solenoids and also the Aeroframe scaffolds, um, as well as cargo rocket sections and solid rocket unit fuel and Iridium. So there's lots and lots of inputs that are needed from here, but most of these are sort of they're intermediates that we're making somewhere for something. So, for example, the rocket fuel is already being made en masse down on Nor Norvis, and so it's, it's easy to put it into the train, although he doesn't have very much of it. Especially, same with the aeroframe scaffolds. The uh, rocket control units are being made down there in large numbers. I think he might have had to put in a belt to bring those over. Then the, the, rocket, the rock cargo rocket parts are a little bit different because they are being made. They're being shipped up here in, in, in stacked form and then unstacked here and passed down here, down a single side of the belt because these things are really expensive, so we want to keep the number down, up being passed through down a little bit. And on that topic, he's also, because they're so expensive, then you, instead of using a loader to put them in, in which case you put in as many as you possibly can. So down here, for example, we've got 2,000 blank. Actually, no, that isn't that many. We've got 244 heat shielding. Again, not that many. It dumps in as many as it possibly can, uh, rather than dumping in as many as it actually needs. So whereas using an inserter, we'll put in a smaller number of them, which is why he's using an inserter to load the uh, cargo rocket sections in, because as I said, they're rather expensive. I was going to say, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised if he was doing the same with the rocket control units, but I guess he's reckoned on those not being quite as expensive and therefore it's, it's okay to just shove as many in, in there as needed. Now this is now this is now finished and will work although it's not outputting to anywhere these will need to be taken away and put into spaceships to take the uh, take the relevant stuff away and presumably he's going to output into into red chests over here and have a miniature robot network here or maybe maybe some cunning stuff with them um, with inserters we, we shall see but those need to be passed out into into a spaceship but up here there's quite a lot of ingredients that we don't have so looking across the top here you can see we don't have holmium cables we don't have holmium plates uh, although the holmium plates will be done through a, a system, cunning system up here so we don't have the holmium ingots that we be turned into the plates and then passed down into here and so on. Um, 
consider there's just a gap there. The holmium solenoid's the same. Um, the, air, the, the rocket fuel is a bit of a, is, is an odd one, actually. The, the, these aeroframe um, bulkheads aren't being made. And so these are all things that we are eventually going to be making down on Norvis. Because, as I, I think I was saying yesterday, if we make these things down on Norvis, then we can use productivity modules with them so we can make them much more efficiently. And these things are fairly expensive. If we, if we look at the bulkheads, for example, these cost low density structure, aeroframe, immersion plate, and beryllium plates. So there's a lot of stuff going into that. And these aeroframe scaffolds take aeroframe, uh, cryonite, and immersion plate. The low density structures, well, depending on how we make them, either are pl lots of plastic, steel, copper, or aeroframe scaffolds again, plastic, glass, steel. So there's, there's, lots and lots of, there's lots and lots of stuff going into all of these. So if we can make these down on Norvis, that's massive savings, massive reduction in the amount of beryllium and immersion and other things that will be used for making these. So it's very worth, it's going to be very much worth making those down on Norvis, even if that means we do end up running the beryllium ingots down in a train, down onto Norvis, and then bringing all of this back up. And so this ties into what I was saying yesterday about wanting to get a good supply of beryllium up and running. So we can make all of these things. We can have it shipped over here by train and then ship it down in a train down to Norvis in order to make all of this and bring it back up again. And whilst that is a little bit of extra handling, a little bit of extra going up and down the space elevator, I think the space elevator, the cost of actually using the space elevator once you've paid the cost of have it, just having it to there are relatively small. And so I think this is going to be very, very worthwhile and is going to save us quite a lot of the exotic materials. We then need to do the same with the Holmium and the Iridium in order to get those shipped shipped around nicely by spaceship and so on. But there's quite a lot of extra stages to go through with all of this. So it's, um, it's going to be a little while until we get all of this running. But hopefully we'll be able to get at least a bit of all of the things we need available here, even if some of it does get sent around by delivery cannon from the source planets. And then we'll be able to get these up and running and be able to start doing the, uh, doing the advanced researches as, as I've been saying. A big part of this is the probulator train that comes up from Norris. We're also bringing in the uh, the data cards with with just a standard data card drop station there, which will pull the trains over from the data card pickup over here. I wonder how the supply is doing at the moment. Ah, wow! Look at that. We've actually caught up for certain values. Caught up. We've got. We've now got. We've now got eleven thousand in the warehouses, plus another five thousand in the train. So that's that's a one, two, three trains worth available. That's really, really good. We've actually done a decent amount of catch up here, despite Tristan having pulled in a rather a lot of um, of data cards to make all of the uh, the probes he's making. Um, he's going to be demanding a lot more once he starts loading those probes into uh, into spaceships to send them off. But for now, we're actually we're actually up to the level of supply we want and all these ones that are being recycled are just trickling in here and we've stopped this one coming through so this means the uh, the train down here all of this is fully caught up up here we are presumably suitably caught up with the uh, with the substrates as well everything is working remarkably well over here um, it's not going to for long as soon as we start doing more science to pack types we're going to suddenly rip through all of those very very quickly probably um, but at least at the moment we seem to have a decent supply available looking in these warehouses there's not that much in there. We could increase the number on here a bit to sort of 10,000, 20,000, something like that, in order to pull a lot more in. I don't know whether that's worthwhile or not. At the moment, it feels like it's quite nice to let all of this system have a bit of a break after we've been working so hard to get all of the buffers filled up. But on the other hand, filling up the buffers here a bit more might actually be more useful. I don't know, but we, do, we never want to get into the position where we can't deal with all of these cards coming in. So we need to make sure there's always enough headroom here for all of the recycled data cards to get in. So, yeah, it... I could see that going either way. I'm not sure which way, which which is better. Of course, as part of all of the uh, probe setup, Tristan has also put in an additional train loading system down here, where we've got one called Probulator Pickup. So as you can see here, it's got a mix of all those sort of bits and pieces that I was talking about earlier. There's all that rocket fuel that I was saying was a bit limited, uh, the and and, and 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 so on. All the bits and pieces that are needed to make up everything that is, is being done up up there in space. It looks like we're making the um, uranium fuel cells on site as well. So we've got a bit of a bit of steel, a bit of uranium, a bit a two three five, a bit of uranium two three eight, all being shipped up there to make those. And that's being done in the very standard way that you've seen quite a few times already. We've got them all being, we've got all those different products being brought in here from the uh, from the bus system we've got, and they're all being merged together and shipped up here. And then next to it we have a streaming pickup. So there's there's uh, all, all the stuff being brought up for um, the streams area, which is here just up from where we're making the probes. And so the, here we now have a train that's bringing in all the bits and pieces that are needed for well for for this for the, for making for making all of the different types of stream. So that's Things like stone and sand, or stone to make sand, presumably, and rare metals, and goodness knows what else. And all of that is fed into the uh, into the various types of accelerators over here that will then beat it up appropriately to turn it into um, green clouds, blue clouds, 
pink clouds and orange clouds. Um, I'm not going to go into those in too much more detail. Then over here we have the other things I was talking about yesterday, which is all of the all of the bits and pieces that the spaceships are going to be taking out. So we've got the the meteor defense ammo, we've got the filters. In the future, there's going to be more things as well, like tr the train batteries and and so on. So all of those are being brought in by the tra by train to here, and they're coming down this purple belt here from up here where we have an unloadery system over here which is bringing all of those things over from oh, goodness knows where no it's not it's currently not being brought from anywhere so um, this is this is obviously a, a part a part finish thing that Mark's been up to at some point he will put in the station at the other end for this to go off and pick up the uh, the meteor defense ammo the the spaceship the the elevator cable and the uh, and the filters and I'm guessing that's going to be somewhere over near the bus because at the moment we have the filters being made on the bus here so there's a flood of filters pouring up, pouring up over here, and they're all being currently being, going, being brought over to a to an outpost. No, they're not being brought over to an outpost station. They're, they should be. There should still be an outpost station um, because I think we still have a few outposts. But there doesn't seem to be. Maybe that's gone. That's a that's a, a little bit concerning. Hmm. Um, but they're being fed up to over here. Oh, oh, our outpost train picks up from up here. Uh, that makes that makes more sense because it's it needs to unload the dirty filters around here, and it probably doesn't need repair packs and other stuff quite so much anymore because we've got that ridiculous all-encompassing uh, RoboPort network that goes basically everywhere. So we'll have another station equivalent to this one where we're dropping up where where it's picking up the the filters. That that will probably be done down here somewhere. We'll also start making the elevator cable somewhere on the bus and feeding them to here. And I I don't know where we're making the meteor defense ammo, but it'll be it'll, it'll be available somewhere, probably not too far from the bus because that's where all the things are. And we'll feed all of those into a train, ship them over here, and and so on. I don't know why we're not just putting them on on more of these belts, but. I guess a train is sort of more efficient because you don't have quite as much stuff just sitting on the belts, so maybe that's a good thing. Who knows? We do already have the discharged batteries coming along here, actually, so maybe we should be shipping that. Those are, those are already on the on the bus system, so maybe we should just be shipping those up instead of charged ones. That would make I mean that would make sense. They could just be charged on site then, and it makes very little difference either way. That was a bit of a distraction because I was really just looking at the uh, the probe probe pickup station down here, but then I noticed there's a couple of other ones that had interesting stuff to say about them. So so I so I did. Uh, this one over here is for the uh, material science park pickup. So I don't know why material science park needs needs the things that are going in here, but apparently it does. So um, sure, why not? The next thing we're going to look at is how Tristan's been working on all of the sort of the supply and demand that's been going on. So we're uh, making sure just just basically making sure that everything is still running the way it should. So previously, we had a system over here that was taking all of the stone that comes that came out of these um, machines over here. It was crushing it down into glass and then feeding it off to uh, to somewhere, probably to probably over, giving it all to uh, to Mike to uh, to deal with with it um, over in the material science area. We've now got through all of the copper as well, so that is now has now all been fed, at least put into the, into the warehouse over here. So it'll be used up to make more uh, to, to make to make more um, of the of the material testing packs. The iron is kind of dealt with. We have 72,000 of it left here, and it's gradually getting passed up here um, into the in, into the material science to be turned into, apparently into the little pots of pink goo that we're making for biological sciences, uh, which then get turned into pot, pots of green goo and, and so on and so on. Um, but we're not doing very much in the way of bioscience at the moment, so we're not really getting through it. We could ship it all over to, uh, to Mike to put into the material sciences as well. Uh, that would probably get rid of it a bit more quickly, but it would upset Mike a little bit. So either that's an extra reason to use it or a reason not to, I'll let you decide. But shipping all of these things off and getting rid of them now, because we're not filling them up anymore, because we're shipping all of this down to Norvis to be reprocessed, means that we've now got space for extra stations to be put in here, like this uh, water unloading station. So this is bringing up water from Norvis and then piping it out to be used for everything we need it for down here. Um, this is this is the problem with the, uh, the, the heavy oil processing we had before. Now we've got enough water to, to do that. And it means that if we need anything else around here, there's, a, there's space for a few more things to be brought in. He's updated the science trains to do uh, tier 4 for all of them now. So over here you can see we've got the tier 4 um, material catalogues in here. They're unloading merrily into the into the system, so we've yeah, we've dumped out most of the material 4s. Um, interestingly, we seem to have got more, rid of more 1s and 2s than 3s, and then loads of 4s, but that's okay because we're filling, filling it up. And that means those can now flood in here, and we can now do material science 4, which is quite exciting. 
He's also reprogrammed the rest of the trains to, to be able to support that as well. So along here, we're now, we're now programmed for energy four packs in here, even if it's not actually going to put any in. So we still need, in order to get that to work, we'll still need to do this to, to allow the train to fill up with them. But it's a step in the right direction. At the moment, we don't have energy energy four packs available, so we don't want to allow the train to try and fill up with those because it'll mean it'll just sit at the other end. So it'll think, well, I haven't got any, any energy four packs yet, uh, catalogs yet, so I won't go anywhere. Presumably that means he's done the same with the bio and the um, and the and the astro as well. Yes, there we go. And he's done all the programming down here. So we've got the astro four set programmed on there. We don't have it programmed in here yet, but uh, that's that's again is is for the same same reason as I said before. Otherwise the train would go. Oh, I haven't got any astro four. I better go off and get them. And it would depart and it would come. We wouldn't be able to find any, so it would come back again and so on. It would just go round and round forever. He's possibly also um, no, he hasn't. Oh, yes, he has programmed it down. Here for the Astro 4 input, or maybe that was me. Um, one of us, anyway, has no. This was me. I've put in the system here, the belt here, and that should now say if um, it actually it's not set up properly. These should now be set to say in the same way. This is saying if less than a thousand Astro 3, this should say less than a thousand Astro 4. But I've not programmed that one up yet because I've. Um, just haven't completed the job. This splitter is actually correct because we'll only have Astro 4 catalogs coming up along here, which means that this splitter is just here to send them to the two warehouses, not to do a, um, a sorter like that one is. So that means Material 4 is running, as I say. We have uh, have it being produced over here in suitable, suitably large quantities, fed out down, down, the, down the belt all the way down here. That's a lot of... That's, going to, that's an enormous number of memory cards tied up on this belt. That's horrible. Um, but... Uh, what can you do? What, it's either that or have four separate trains bringing them from with a, with a separate train bringing them from up here over to the science park, which I mean is possible, but not not how we're doing it. So down here, those are all being those are all being fed in. The the, the train is working as you saw earlier, so that's nice. Um, that's a sort of a team effort between Mike and Tristan. So credit where it's uh, credit for everybody there. Tristan has also started supplying um, space assembly machines up the up the up the uh, the train system because they were needed on the uh, they they're needed here. To, they're, they're basically passed along here, and then they go into the Tower of Doom, where a lot of these machines that we're making up here require assembly machines because they need to build something, and that's how you build a thing. And they were being loaded into the rocket before when we were using a rocket to come up, but I missed them out when I was moving from supplying everything by rocket to supplying everything by train. And I missed over here that they were being fed in from, yes, this assembly machine over here, which is making the space assembly machines from um, from scratch, apparently, by the looks of it. So they are, conveniently, these are not uh, one of the telescopic recipes. They don't require a, a, a tier of ground assembly machines. They are just made straight from raw components. So they're being fed along here, and now they were being fed into the rocket, but instead now they're being diverted down here. Purple belt, so the purple underground, so it goes all the way down here to the bottom, and then that allows it to zip all the way along the bottom of the base, the bus, and then down an additional belt over here, and then we've finally got a backup, but they're finally backed up to about here. So we are producing them faster than we're using them, so that's good, but they are then, then being dragged all the way over here, and they're put in as another input for the train of absolutely everything up to the bus, please. So, yes, that is an important extra thing that we needed in large quantities and just straight up didn't have. Tristan has also redone the prioritisation of downstream trains. So, when this was first implemented, a train that came in would come around here, it would come up to the chain signal and it would go, OK, where shall I go? And it would go into this one here where it would unload, which is fine. It would always go into this one because it's the nearest one. But this is unloading using red, uh, lo red loaders and red underground, red everythings, which is... A bit, a bit slower. In fact, there's only six of them unloading here, as opposed to the ten on the next step over. So it was just Tristan decided that it would be better to make the trains go into this one over here by priority, because these are all green unloaders, and therefore, and there's ten of them. So this is going to unload much, much quicker, at least until the buffer fills up along to, to along here. At which point, it'll then be crammed down onto uh, five belts to be passed further on, which is slows it down a bit. But you get that first burst out, and it's a bit quicker. So that's sort of better, sort of better. So he wanted to prioritise those. So he set up a system where um, this station monitors this signal and will only be t and will only be active when this signal goes red. So essentially, when there is a train in this station, th this station will be activated, and so a train can come in here. When there's a train in this station, this station will be activated, so a third train can come into here, and so on all the way across. So that means a train will come into this one. If there's a train in here, then there's always room for a train to come into this one. But if there isn't a train in this one, then the, fir the first train will always come in over here. Now, that does mean that if a train comes in and parks here, and then a train comes in and parks in this one and starts unloading, 
when this train leaves, the next train, the third train, will come into this one unless this train has left. But, I mean, that doesn't really matter. It's just a tiny bit less efficient. If this train has left, then the train will come into this one instead. At least I assume that's how it works. Because, I do, yeah, this one only seems to be uh, wired in there. So, you see, the first a train that's come in will now automatically go into uh, into this station. Uh, even, even though it didn't need to unload. And then it will apparently then sit down here. And it sits down here because the other thing that we've done... Uh, this Tristan, and Tristan had to make some further changes to this system um, because uh, previous I, I have come in here and I've set this now to have two trains for this um, for the bus loading system because we had so much stuff, so much demand um, because of all of the building that was being done. There was massive quantities of, of construction being done, and all of that requires huge quantities of uh, low density structures and heat shield and steel in order to make the aeroframe scaffolds. And there's been other stuff going on as well. But as you can see, we've got lots of aerof oh, aeroframe bulkheads coming. No, aeroframe scaffolds and uh, low density structures and so on uh, coming through here now because we, we're just churning through lots and lots of all of this stuff. And one train wasn't enough to keep the system running. Now, you will notice that the other train left when this train was already here. So it looks, that, looks like right now we don't have that ex excess and amount of demand going on. But sometimes when the when the demand increases, we do need a, we do need seem to need an awful lot of stuff. I went through quite a lot of experimentation with this as well. So at the moment, we're just we're not doing anything clever. We're just looking at the train and saying, well, if if there's a train here, load it up. We don't care. Um, if we end up with more low density structures, more aeroframe scaffolds, more heat shield tiles up in up in space, and we need then we technically need. Celavi, who cares? It's it's all it's all relatively cheap stuff, and it's stuff we get through a lot of anyway. So I don't mind. We'll accept that we seem to have a bit of an oversupply of that. However, the stuff that was being brought in by to the blue chest over here, that's the sort of stuff where you don't tend to want quite so much of it because it's 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 funny little infrastructure bits. So it might be laser turrets, or it might be some sort of chests, or it might be it's going to be weird things you don't really want on mass. And so I hit on the great idea of of, of exporting a signal from the from the station up here of the um, of the train of the train's um, information. And so you can get a signal out from here of the, the T, which is what we're using down here to say, well, if, if T is greater than zero, that means there is a train here, so we want to pass the signals through. And that means that that's why stuff only flows on these belts when there is a train in the station. However, you can look at that T signal and identify which train it is. So I thought, okay, we'll look at the trains and we'll say, okay, this is train number 27535, it's written over there on the right. And so we'll look at, and when two, train 27535 is in the station, we'll turn this on and load all of the extra goodies into there. The funny, the funny business, the things that we don't want to order multiple copies of. But when train 275979 is in the station, we won't. We'll, we'll, we won't order those over. So those bits and pieces will only be ordered over for this train. And that should get around that problem. Unfortunately, it turns out if you're using space elevators, when the train goes through up the space elevator, it gets deleted and a new train gets created at the other end, and then when the same when it comes back down again. So actually, every single time it comes in, these, the train has a different number, and so we weren't able to use that. And so I couldn't come up with a good way of solving that one, unfortunately, which is very upsetting. But that means I've now, uh, instead, instead, I've ended up having to load the, uh, instead, we're just loading all those things onto both the trains, and it's, it's not ideal, but it will work. It has just occurred to me that maybe, I see, can you blacklist with a loader? No, you can't. You can only have whitelist filtering. Okay, that's a shame. Because I was thinking if you could blacklist with a filter, with a, with a loader, then we could have a system that um, loads one of the, where one of the trains has a random item on it. It could be, it's just something silly like a fish. And then you read off to see if the fish is on the train. And if there is a fish on the train, then you turn this on. And if there isn't, then you don't. The problem is that up at the top end, up in Norbit, where the train gets unloaded, there's nothing to make sure that you um, that the fish that the fish gets left inside the train. I'd have to use inserters for it because, as you can see, I can't set up filter. I can't set up blacklist filters on on here. Only whitelist ones, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so yeah, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to just leave that fish on the train. So I don't. I'm not sure there's another good way to identify. I can't, yeah, that that alternative way of identifying the train won't work either. And as I said at the moment, you can see that both trains are currently parked down here. There's nothing being loaded into it. So we've got over the massive burst of stuff being needed. However, this does mean that we've now got the system available to, uh, to, to work as and when we, uh, we need it in the future. The slight downside of this is it means that this, this, the other um, bus train is permanently blocking the, uh, the green unloaders over here, which are technically the best ones. 
Um, but again, never mind. It, the whole thing will, will will just work. It's not it's not the end of the world. I've also set the uh, train system up to start bringing petroleum gas to the space bus. Uh, we need to check whether I've actually done it properly. But as you've seen before, we've got the trains doing. We've got the swap over trains here, where this one will fill up a space train, which then comes up to uh, Norbit up here and will unload into into this tank. Uh, it appears it looks like I haven't done it properly because it isn't working. So here we've got a petroleum gas drop station that is currently has no train limit on it. Is in it should be enabled because there's less than one thousand in it. Um, yes, it is enabled. Over here, there's a petroleum gas train, probably. Yes, it's this one. Why are you not... Are you, you're only going to flow above because it's this, because this train wasn't set up properly. So this needs to also now go to petroleum gas drop until empty. Uh, it's even on auto, It's on automatic. Why is it stopped there? Okay, so it's waiting there until, until, it's got somewhere, oh, until it's got somewhere to go. So presumably I can just get rid of that. And now, yes, now, now it'll leave and head, head over there. I think that's how, how these things are supposed to be set up. Uh, yes, fluid buffer with nothing in and then go to water drop when a water drop is available. Um, actually, no, it's not. That's not correct. I'm also going... I'm, I, what I need to do over here is I need to... So, let me, let, me, let me show you how it's supposed to work. Here, we have a water drop. You'll notice that's purple when it's not needed. That's because we're using the train limits over here. Uh, so, I haven't set this up correctly. Over here, we're going to need to put in a decider combinator like this and put this in here and have that decide... That way, that way around and have this decide to send a signal over to here when it's ready to send it down, when it's ready to ship it out. Also, this is, this is showing a no path for going down to Norvis. That's very strange. There's going to be a number of things that need looking into here, because apparently this is all generally broken. I don't know why that won't go zip through here. There's may, Maybe the signal's in the wrong place on the, on the there, but it's in the, exactly the same place as it is for all the other ones. Something funny is going on here. That's going to need to be looked at. And while I'm up here, the final thing I've uh, I completed last time, it fits in the sort of the general supply and demand um, area, I suppose, is I've, I've fi I uh, fixed up the hack job I did on the Misfortune uh, last week. So you'll remember last week I uh, I came in along, along here, I, I cobbled together a sort of ship that would just about work, given the bits and pieces I had available. I've now come in and I've tidied this all up quite a lot, so it's now a nice, sleek, sensible looking ship again with a decent amount of storage in it. And so that means now I can move on to talking about Mike, who's been loading this up with all the, all the bits and pieces that he's planning to take out to Kothar. So over on Kothar, Mike is intending to build something similar to this, uh, allowing him to have a supply of solar power available that's going to then be passed down the space elevator to power everything over on Kothar. I don't think he's actually got started on that yet, but let's have a quick look. No, so far no nothing's been built over here, apart from a tiny little patch of um, of a space scaffolding, um, but that's okay. I mean, yes, say work, work in progress. And so to go along with that, back in Norvis orbit, he's been he's been loading up enormous quantities of space scaffolding into into the into the misfortune and quite a lot of um, solar panels as well. And these are all ready to be shipped off over there when when he's ready when he's ready to start building. And it, it strikes me that it's a little bit um, the timing on the uh, on rebuilding the misfortune is a little ironic, given that um, Mark has, is, is now working on these these personal ships for all of us. So these are going to carry far more stuff than the misfortune. They're much bigger. They're going to be much much faster. Just generally better in every possible way. However. However, to be fair, Mike's isn't actually finished yet. I, this, this one may well end up being his, even though it says Lawrence Cross at the moment. So he can carry on using the Misfortune in the meantime until this, until this one is finished off. So, yeah, that's fair enough. It, it's still going to be useful, even though we are moving on from this sort of design at the moment. And so, over on Kothar, yes, Mike has been... Um, he's been out here again. He's been sort of... He, he's been sort of busy. So, as I was saying, he's, he's planning to put—he's planning for his space elevator to drop in, which is presumably going to try and land. It, it sort of doesn't matter because he's got everything on a train system anyway. But all of his, his iridium is being made down here at the moment, so he can put in an, an elevator almost anywhere he wants and link it, in, link it into his in, into the system, and it'll be able to then start taking the iridium up from here, so we can stop using the uh, the delivery cannons. And I presume most of these are either to Norvis or Norbit. Let's have a let's have a quick look. So this one is firing to nowhere. That one's going to Norvis. That one's to Norbit. 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 Okay, so so from here, having having replacing all of these delivery cannons with a single spaceship that shuttles from Kothar orbit to Norvis orbit and back, and, and just takes all the iridium over that way, is going to be absolutely fine. At the moment, well, I don't I don't know how how, how his uh, supplies getting on over here. I can't remember what these were on before, but um, I. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how the supply goes, and once he starts trying to fill up spaceships as well, because I think I think he's going to run into the same problem that I have. That when you're making your ingots at this sort of rate, it's going to take a very very long time to fill up a spaceship. But that's why he's out there. He's out there to do some improvements and make, get everything up and running a bit more effectively, a bit more efficiently. And also, this is going to give him an opportunity. When he switches over to solar, he can get rid of all of this free power system down here. 
um, and the, uh, and down here as well. He's, geez, he's got a lot of it, uh, and and hopefully he's then also going to be able to upgrade all of the all of all of the modules in all of these machines, and also upgrade maybe upgrade the machines, and probably even upgrade the beacons, and just redesign this whole thing so it works a bit better, as I was talking about before. But as a starting point on that, he's. Um, Basically, he's uh, got he's gone up here to to try and clean up all of the uh, the biter incursions that have happened. So he was having a lot of issues up here on the northern front, I think, um, which is a little bit odd given how far away that is from everything. But I think he was having, well, I don't know. I was going to say I think he was having some issues with pollution leaking, and it looks like yes, actually there is quite a bit of pollution leaking outside his uh, filter, his, his, what is presumably his filter belt here. Yes, um, because he has absolutely no clean filters on it, and so the whole thing has has stopped running. Um, I believe this is because he's just straight up run out of filters to put onto it. So whereas I was on, on uh, Talos, I've been making the filters. I think he just brought out a huge number of them with him when he first came out here and has then been running through all of those. And this is finally, they finally all run out and I don't know where he's doing his filtration fil or filter handling. It looks like it looks like it here. So I assume he's now got to the point where he's used up enough of his filters that he just doesn't have enough clean ones left to keep the system running, and so a lot of his a lot of his uh, purif air purifiers have stopped working, and so the pollution is starting to leak out in places where it shouldn't, and that's causing the biters to get angry and come in and start nibbling on the walls, and so he's had to go in and go out and do bits of um, bits of repair work, and there'll probably be some artillery work as well to be done. So yeah, that's going to keep him busy for a little while. However, despite both him and myself both going out and doing combat in the last stream, neither of us may, neither of us got killed. So we're doing quite well. We've blown, killed, killed goodness knows how many biters, but without getting it, without getting our faces eaten ourselves. And I think that's largely down to now having better equipment, better weapons, and maybe a little bit more common sense. But I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> and that means we get to move on now to the to the researches. In last week's video, I mentioned we got up to, we got mining productivity seven on the way, and so now that one's been finished, that's going to make all of our mines cheaper, more effective. They're just going to produce more. They're going to produce more stuff from the same amount of ore and the same amount of time. So that's great. We've got Material Catalog 4 was done last week, but we've now done Material Science Pack 4 as well, so we can start making those those science packs. And that means we can start working on all of these researches, except we can't because uh, there's, there's other prereqs for them as well, but still, that's a, that's, a nice, that's a nice advancement. And we have Worker Robot Speed 9, currently underway. We're, we're working on it. it it's, we've got uh, some of the way through it, because this takes 4,800 and all the way up to t Tier 3 Energy Science. So this is quite an expensive one, but it'll get, again, it'll get us some extra robot speed once it's done. Uh, we've also... Queued up a few more, but I think I won't mention those just just now. I mean, they're, they're, you can see them all up there, but I won't talk about them yet. We'll talk about them in a future video once they've actually been done. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. We've had uh, quite a bit of an uh, advancement this time, especially with uh, Mark make, getting those spaceships up and built. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of excitement to get those up and running in the in the next uh, in the next stream or two. And just desperately trying to to fill them all up with the huge amount of resources that they're going to act, they're going to be able to carry. <laughs> um, so we'll be back on Monday to to carry on with that. So make sure you come along then. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Um, and then on Tuesday, I will hopefully have well, hopefully there's going to be a video about <laughs> about the SLK if you're a supporter, or about or last week's MX5 video if you're not. So we'll give. I'm trying to keep these ones coming out at a decent rate. We'll see how we'll see whether I manage to find the time to to, to uh, get it through, all done. I need to, I need to record a bit more footage for the SLK one, so it's going to take a, li a little bit longer. And I'll be back on Wednesday for the uh, XCOM stream. It went quite well last week. Nobody got killed, which is you know and a huge achievement in XCOM I feel although we do have an enormous number of fairly severely injured soldiers or in some cases very severely injured soldiers so it's going to be a bit tricky to get them all back up on their feet again before the next mission comes in so if you um if you're if you fancy uh, fancy your chances if you'd like to submit a new soldier then I'll definitely be getting them added in there because I could I could do with some more recruits basically um so yeah, please come along to that stream and get a soldier submitted if you haven't already. Ask me on Discord if you need to know how, or find or dig up the video. And then Friday and Saturday of next week, we'll have more of these Factorio videos as well, of course. So, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.